everyone, it's Laura, and I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be talking about vegetarian sources of omega-3 fatty acids. So if you're interested, then keep watching. So first I figured I'd kind of just give you an overview of omega-3 fatty acids. And what they do is they not only help with heart function and brain function, but with overall health, and they're super important. And they're said to be essential, and that's not because they're important, which they are. They're considered essential because your body can't make them. So it's something that you must consume or eat. So why is this so important for vegetarians or vegans? The primary source of omega-3 fatty acids are fish. And they can be found in vegetarian sources, but it's a different type of omega-3s. So the omega-3s that are thought to be most beneficial are EPA and DHA. And these are naturally, like I said, found in fish. Um, the form found in vegetarian sources are alpha-linolenic acid, or you may see ALA. And alpha-linolenic acid, once it's consumed in your body, can be converted to EPA and DHA. However, the conversion rate is really small. It's somewhere between half of a percent and 10%. So a really small percentage of alpha-linolenic acid is converted to EPA and DHA, which are considered the most important omega-3s. So what, as a vegetarian or vegan, what can you do to ensure that you're getting enough omega-3s in your diet, and particularly of EPA and DHA? So you have some options. Um, the important thing with deciding how you're going to get your omega-3s is making sure to read the label. So ideally, you'd consume at least um, 1,000 milligrams or one gram of EPA and DHA combined. Okay, so that would mean that in order to ensure that you're doing that, um, it would be on the back of the label. If on the label it says ALA, then what I do is I multiply that by 5% because since we know it's somewhere between half of a percent and 10%, I kind of choose somewhere in the middle. So multiply it by 5% if it's alpha-linolenic acid, and that's about the amount of EPA and DHA you'll be consuming. Um, I know a lot of vegetarians and vegans do choose to supplement, and that's an option. That's something I'm actually looking into, and so once I decide on which supplements I like and which supplements I believe actually make a difference, then I'll make a separate video on that in regards to vegetarian sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Um, but if you're wanting to go the more natural route, then definitely look into flaxseed oil, look into algae oil. Because fish, it, the EPA and DHA is found in fish, but it's actually the reason the fish have it is because they eat the algae. So then the EPA and DHA from the algae is in the fish. And so then in turn, we eat the fish and get the EPA and DHA. So you could do algae oil, which is EPA and DHA is naturally found in that. You could do chia seeds. Chia seeds have omega-3s in them, but again, it, they're alpha-linolenic acid. Um, also, walnuts have alpha-linolenic acid. Um, and again, these are foods that have the omega-3s, but the conversion factor is low. So my recommendation, if you're a vegetarian, then look into some type of oil, whether it's the flaxseed or the algae, and also consider supplementation. And as always, don't start taking any pills without talking to your doctor first and just clearing it by him or her. Unfortunately, um, I've recently started looking at the vegetarian sources of omega-3s, and the stores that I've looked at, the supplements were just crap. Um, because what they'll do is on the front say a thousand milligrams of omega-3s and then you turn it over and it's all alpha linolenic acid. Um, same with even the fish oil supplements. It, on the front it'll say two grams of omega-3 fatty acids and then you turn it over and it's only a hundred milligrams of EPA and DHA. And so it is super important to read labels, especially with supplementation. Um, and kind of the rule of thumb is the more you pay for a supplement, the better it is, um, unfortunately. Um, so if you are considering supplementing, then make sure to read the label. Ideally, the EPA and DHA, if they're combined, 
there a good amount is a gram or a thousand milligrams. If it's alpha-linolenic acid, then making sure that when you read the label, it's at least seven or eight grams, ideally more, because like I said, the conversion factor is super low. So check out flaxseed oil, check out algae oil, um, and in the meantime, I'll keep researching the um, omega-3 vegetarian sources and finding some supplements that I think are pretty legit. And as always, I'm going to try them out. I'll order them, buy them, try them for a little bit, and then I'll get back to you in regards to which ones I think are actually beneficial. <laughs> Um, so I hope this video helped you out. I hope it didn't confuse you too much. If you have any questions regarding omega-3s, alpha-linolenic acid, EPA, DHA, I'm sure you all have your own opinions in regards to supplementing, particularly with omega-3s. So if you do, if you agree, oppose, feel free to express your opinion. Um, I'm open to whatever you'll have to say. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Also, don't forget to check out my website. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in being notified when I put up new videos. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, then as always, leave them down below and I'll make them. And I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.